Yes, a very good morning to all of you. How are you? How's audit? How's audit? Okay, right. And then your anticipation that probably, you know, it would be the last attempt under the old course. So Institute will be very, you know, full of gratitude or, you know, very much charitable when it comes to the marks, but it doesn't happen that way or rather it didn't happen that way. So because of that reason, we need to now study under the new syllabus. So let's begin our discussion with trying to analyze our new syllabus, right, regarding what are the changes and what are the things which we don't need to study and the chapters that we need to study additionally. Right, so now from May 24 onwards, either up to the previous attempt, there were 36 standards. Now you have the 46 standards which are applicable for your exams. Right, so the 10 new standards which are now applicable are the standards in the 800 series, 800, 805, 810. Then you have the standards on review engagement in which you have 2400, 24. 10 then SAE 3400 that is standards on assurance engagement 3400 3402 and 3420 and then two standards in the related services that is 4400 and 4410 yes why is it not coming you can add the screen one more time yeah double click Again, the one doubt, one doubt, yeah, yes, right, hmm? coming, fine. Okay, right. So these are the standards which have been in the syllabus till May 19 exams. Then after that institute thought, why am so much of burden for the students? Then November 19 onwards, they were not applicable. And now again, they have re-entered into your syllabus. So in case if you see in the books, it will be written May 18 question has been asked or May 17 question. You might wonder, oh, they became applicable in May 24. Where have the questions come from? So they were applicable till May 19. So some of you are into the legacy of the CA course might already might have studied this you understand you might have probably already studied this and then you say oh you know because now when I'm teaching these standards again it's like a old memories coming back to me of all the examples and you know the teaching of these standards so I missed them a lot when these standards went away so now they've come again so I'm very happy okay right so that's one part right that is these four chapters that is that's there in your chapter number eight then after that the chapter number 10 chapter number 11 and the chapter number nine as the institute study material if you look into the institute study material as well as our books you see the 19 chapters over there right so chapter number 8 9 10 11 it is regarding these 10 standards right so obviously one point of our focus in this particular batch is going to be to cover these 10 standards and earlier you know the weightage of these standards in your exams was like 25 to 30 marks now the weightage of the 46 standards they have increased it to 50 marks Right, so now you will have to work more towards the standards. Like standards is not only standards on auditing. The standards which are issued by ICAI are called as the engagement and quality control standards. Right, so for quality control, we have only one standard, SQC. But very soon, ICAI is also has already issued the exposure draft for this, wherein they are now coming up with SQM, Standard on Quality Management 1 and 2. But right now it's under the exposure draft, but contingency planning, I'm just telling you, you know, okay, further on it is going to become SQM 1 and 2, but right now we have the SQC 1, right? Then in the standards on auditing, we have the 38 standards where all 38 are applicable. Then SRE, we have two standards on review engagement, SAE, that is standards on assurance engagement, three over there, and standards on related services, two standards, right? And one standard on quality control. So that's the breakup of the 46 standards. So more or less, I can put it this way, the chapter number 1 to 11 in your books, it's regarding these standards. 
Hi, chapter number one in the institute study material same goes in line with our book also it is regarding these 46 standards and in addition to these 46 standards between in the chapter number one to eleven we also have an enhanced discussion regarding the internal control which was there in old course also also there in the new course but now in the new course what they've done they've increased the discussion regarding the international internal control framework do you know the national internal control framework do you know the national internal control framework it is the ifc the internal financial controls mentioned under the companies act 2013 section 134 subsection 5 and statutory auditor of the company under section 143.3i you have to report whether the company has adequate internal financial controls and also the operating effectiveness of such control so that's the national framework for the internal control but we also have some international controls right international framework in which we have COSO then we have COCO then we have the COBIT right then after that we have the ICOFR right and also the combined code right so an enhanced discussion in the old course already for COSO that is the internal control integrated framework they've asked a five mark question Right, so now they have a bigger discussion regarding this COCO, COCO, combined code, ICOFR and the combined code. Right, so that is one point for you to know that there is a discussion regarding internal control. And then yes, we also have the discussion regarding the CARO 2020, the 21 clauses over there. Right, and as such, if you see, company law has been deleted from your syllabus. Like you know, the appointment of company auditor, removal of company auditor, or even qualification disqualification is not there. But what is still there is section one forty three, the rights and duties of the company auditor. Rather, not even the rights, only the duties of the company auditor. Right, duty as to inquiry under one forty three one, duty as to reporting under one forty three three, duty to report the fraud to the central government under section 143.12. So, little bit of these duties of company auditor are there. Okay, right. So, that is regarding the part 1. What is part 1? Chapter number 1 to 11 in which you have the 46 standards. Then also the discussion regarding the internal control and I told you the CARO and section 143 of the Companies Act 2013. Right, so if I look at chapter number one, what is the name of the chapter? Quality control, right? So quality control wherein we discuss SQC 1 and SA 220. Quality control for firms and quality control for an audit of the financial statements. Then chapter number two, which is general auditing principles, right? General auditing principles and the auditor's responsibilities in which we are having the discussion of 240, the auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of the financial statements. 250, consideration of laws and regulations in an audit of the financial statements. 260, communication with those charged with governance. Then 299, joint audit of the financial statements and 402 audit considerations relating to an entity using a service organization so that is how institute has done it under the new syllabus under the new course like you know each chapter they are discussing a few standards over there right then after that we have the chapter number three which is regarding the audit strategy audit planning and the audit execution right the audit strategy audit planning and the audit execution so obviously in this chapter we have got to discuss sa 300 planning and audit of the financial statements then here they've also put a discussion on 600 610 620 using the work of another auditor using the work of internal auditor using the work of an auditor's expert and then 540 auditing of accounting estimates including the fair value accounting estimates and related disclosures okay right then chapter number four which is your risk assessment ra what is ra it is your risk assessment and the internal control rather it starts as materiality risk assessment and internal control so materiality with standard 
SA320 materiality in planning and performing an audit then our risk based audit approach we have three standards RRR right 315 330 and 450 right identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement through understanding the entity and its environment 330 the auditor's responses to assess risk 450 the evaluation of the misstatements identified during the audit an auditor when you are doing audit you do control testing and if you come to know about any deficiencies in internal control you will communicate them to the Management TCWG, those charged with governance. So for that we have SA 265, communicating deficiencies in internal control to those charged with governance and management. Okay. And then I already told you that internal control discussion is also there in the chapter number 4. Okay. Then chapter number 5 is audit evidence. Right. Audit evidence means which, means which series? The 500 series starting with SA. 500 audit evidence 501 audit evidence specific consideration for selected items 505 external confirmations 510 initial audit engagements opening balances 520 analytical procedures 530 audit sampling 540 is already covered upstairs in the chapter number three right so now we have five 50, which is regarding the related parties. Okay, so that's chapter number 5. Then chapter number 6 is the completion and review. Right, it is completion and review in which we discuss the remaining 3 standards of the 500 series that is 560, 570 and 580. Subsequent events, going concern and the written representations. Okay, right. Then we have the chapter number 7 which in our book I have divided it as 7A, 7B doesn't matter. We can keep it as one chapter 7 itself but in 7A we discuss the 700 series audit reporting. So 700, 701, 70, 5, 7, 0, 6, 7, 1, 0, and 7, 2, 0. Right? And then 7B we discuss section 143 and the 21 clauses of the CARO 2020. Right, the clauses of the CARO 2020 and chapter number 8, 9, 10, 11, I have already told you it is regarding those 10 standards. Right, chapter number 8, 9, 10, 11. So as such you see specifically in this chapter wise discussion of the standards, we don't see a reference of SA 200, SA 210 and SA 230. Right? So, but they have a passing reference. Right? So, 200 is overall objectives. 210 is the engagement letter, agreeing the terms of audit engagement. And 230 is regarding the audit documentation. Right? Specifically, we don't see it, but yeah, somewhere they are discussed in these standards. Right? Clear everyone? The module 1, the part 1, chapter number 1 to 11. Okay. Right. Then now coming to chapter number 12 to 19. Right. And 12 to 19 from 12 onwards, we talk about all the audits like old, old course. There used to be a chapter called as the special aspects of auditing in an automated environment replaced by the chapter of DA that is digital auditing and assurance. Right. So brand new chapter. Right. So very, very much upcoming area for questions in your exams is the chapter of the digital auditing and assurance. Right. Then in old course, we had a chapter called as the audit of the consolidated financial statements. Same chapter there in the new course, but only name has been changed to group audit. Right, so same old course, it used to be audit of consolidated financial statements, but rest everything one and the same. Right, so group audit. Then after that, now they have combined together the two chapters of the audit of the banks and the audit of the NBFCs, that is the non-banking financial companies. So there in old course also, same thing there in the new course. Right, then chapter number 15, overview of the audit of the public sector undertakings, so that is PSU. There in old course, continues to be there in the new one also. 16, internal audit. Right, earlier along with this internal audit it used to have two more friends management audit and operational audit that is shift delete right so now if you see chapter number 16 it only has the internal audit and internal audit chapter ka contents have been revamped right they've made a lot of discussion regarding the standards on internal audit over there 
right and there is a lot of new discussion like internal audit plan managing the internal audit function performing the internal audit few critical activities internal audit report so was there in old course there in new course also but revamped in the content it's not like same to same if i see bank nbfc psu same to same but internal audit there has been a change over there right then after 16 you have chapter number 17 which is regarding your due diligence the investigations and the forensic accounting due diligence no change at all right investigations we have two types of investigations do you know that due diligence as it is investigations we have two types of investigation investigation under the companies act 2013 and the voluntary investigations like investigation on behalf of incoming partner investigation on behalf of a bank right so investigations under the companies act 2013 wherein we said investigation into the affairs of the company investigation into the ownership of the company now they say study that under your self paced learning module Right. So, investigations under the Companies Act 2013, that much part has been removed from the investigations part. And the rest of the discussion is same, but only one new concept introduced over there is regarding the fraud diamond, right, which we will discuss, right. So, there is a new discussion over there regarding the fraud diamond. And again, for forensic accounting, there has been the revamp in the content, right. So, it's not copy paste. There is still the discussion regarding forensic accounting as it was there in the old course but there is some plus minus which has taken place over there okay then chapter number 18 which is regarding your esg and the sdg assurance brand new chapter right environment social governance and the sustainable development goals so these two chapters da and the esg sdg brand new right no traces anywhere right so digital auditing and assurance chapter number 12 and then the esg and the sdg assurance right so these two are the new chapters and then last we have the chapter number 19 which is regarding the professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor so many of them when they read this term liabilities of auditor they think that earlier there used to be a chapter no liabilities of auditor under companies act and income tax act this has got nothing to do with that this is talking about the liabilities of the auditor under the chartered accountants act 1949 itself Right, so professional ethics and the liabilities of the auditor, little bit of an enhanced discussion regarding the threats to the independence of the auditor, the fundamental principles and all of that. But as such, the 34 clauses of ethics, the part, you know, the first schedule part 1, 2, 3, 4 and second schedule part 1, 2, 3, that continues to be one and the same. Right, so as such, no big change in ethics also over there. And just for us to have it very clear in our mind, now what is not there in the new course, company audit, except for section 143 and the CARO 2020. Okay, right, then liabilities of auditor, that chapter not there. Next chapter, the audit committee and the corporate governance, which was your SEBI LODR, right? So again, that chapter not applicable. Then the audit under the fiscal laws, the tax audit, right? So earlier GST audit not there, now tax audit also not there, right? So one set of 44 clauses, done away with, right? So one set of clauses you need to remember less, right? Then after that, which is the other chapter not there, is the management audit and the operational audit right so that part of the discussion is not there right the management audit and the operational audit right and then apart from that which are the other chapters that you can remember yes oh yes big one audit of insurance companies yes that is not applicable so entire chapter done away with general insurance company life insurance company and both then automated environment has been replaced with the chapter of the Right, the DA, the digital auditing and the assurance. Okay, right, so yeah, peer review. That's the ones which you've deleted, I don't remember, but you remember them well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So anyways, it's gone. No? So I don't think about it, but you know it. Okay. And so those pages of the book, you might have stapled them. No, okay, this is not there. Okay. Right. So peer review and the quality review. Then audit of CF is now called as the group audit over there. Okay. If you look into the new study material of the ICAI, what they have done at the discussions over there, after each concept, they have some questions called your TYU, the test your understanding question, which are very much practical based questions. 
question means these are not memory based questions these are application based question he only if you have understood the concept only then you can apply it right so these are some very very interesting new genre or new variety of questions which have been introduced by the icai right so that's your test your understanding then you have the integrated case scenario that is your mcq questions over there and the third one is test your knowledge which is your theoretical question normal you know whatever past exam case studies and all of that or institute study material question right so that is test your knowledge so now it is at the end of each question chapter you'll see these three question bank over there one will be the test your understanding then the integrated case scenario and then the test your knowledge your real testing of whether you've understood the content of the chapter is when you are able to answer the questions for the test your understanding right is for the test your understanding so obviously by default what i will be taking at more and more specifically is the chapter on the digital auditing and assurance esg sdg assurance and certainly these 10 standards which have come in these four chapters over there and apart from that also we look into the 34 clauses of ethics the 21 clauses of caro and other chapters also i'll be telling you the important concepts but you know before even i begin with you make it as a thumb rule or whichever rule you want to call it for the subject of audit the three things you have to keep it in mind one how many times should i study the subject of audit before the exam personal experience okay <laughs> how many times sit straight in the class right cumulative revision hai na day in day out hundreds and thousands of time you keep on revising revising you have to stay in touch with the subject like you know you see a train and the engine of the train in the front and the engine going and do you see that some 20 coaches of the train also they are attached to it or does it leave one coach at some place and one at another place and just some two coaches it is taking and going ahead? You see like that? No, whatever. If you see it in aerial view, you see the entire train no, carrying all the 20 coaches along with it. So obviously what you have to do, always keep on checking. Hey, when you went TSG, come, 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 even you have to come with me. Hey, when you went group audit, even you come. Because at the time, maximum one or two coaches is what you are carrying. Right, so that will not do. That will be danger for the subject of audit. And then you say, ma'am, I studied. Ma'am, I remembered. But ma'am, I forgot. So that's how the, you know, the beauty, the inherent risk of the subject of audit is there. You understand? So what you have to do is make it difficult to forget. Right, so for that, you have to stay in touch. You know, even though you study the subject for four or five days and one day you don't look at it or you don't revise what you studied and lost 15 days or 20 days, gone. Everything put to, you know, waste over there. Right? So that is why you have to keep on revising, keep on, keep on again and again, not one time, two time, three time, four time. Till the time you clear audit, you have to keep on revising. Okay, that's one. Second, what happens now after so many of the cumulative revision, you happen to remember the content. Okay, what chapter, what content, what discussion, what topics and everything. But you are not able, not you, I'm just saying in general, the students, they are not able to identify, okay, boss, when which question is asked, what answer I need to write. They don't know that. You understand? You know all the, what do you say, states of India, you know all the capitals of the state, but you don't know which state, which capital. That match, the following is missing. And then outside the exam hall, one student comes and then you say, you know, that uh, this was the question asked, like in that movie, uh, what do you say, 12th fell, okay, that fellow, he read it as terrorism in India, but actually the question was asked in some tourism in India, right? So that is what, you end up writing something on your own, then you say, ma'am, however bitter the examiner is with the checking of the paper, at least 55 marks are get, and then you get 23, and then you blame it to ICAI. You understand? I'm not telling your marks. Don't take it personally, but I'm telling you. And that is why you say, ma'am, I don't know why they don't give marks. But see, please realize when you get 23 marks and you fail, no, you failed nicely. You deserve to fail. You know, when you get 59, 59 and 38, 
and then when you have to study these two subjects again after getting 59 and that one subject and just you say ma'am i'm getting 194 or 193 but now it's not 194 yeah it will be 142 or something like that right out of 150 so just for those so it's not that you are inefficient it's not that you are not talented you are reaching up to 140 plus but just because of those 10 marks the ic ai is making uh, things difficult for you right so anyways the second point which i want to tell you over there is in order to you know what you say address this particular risk of the subject of audit you have to look into the mtp rtp suggested the study material question at least of last 5 attempts preferably i would say 5 years but if that is not possible at least 5 attempts then you say ma'am it was old course and now mine is new course so many questions are not relevant my god you are accountancy students you know the concept of substance over form you understand no to nahi hai to chhod do na leave it then if it is not there then leave it but we just want to see the variety of the question and whether our mind is able to you know immediately identify okay you know one question is asked regarding psu next question is asked regarding ethics then they go to sa 810 then there is a question regarding caro then another question on nbfc then a question on sa 240 my god they like move so quickly Then a rapid fire from one chapter, one topic, one discussion to other. Ethics also how we make our life luxurious. We see the clause, we see the questions, and we then we know guilty or not guilty. But no, all of a sudden, if a question is thrown in front of you, that institute is asking a CA to give the certain information, and this fellow is not giving the information to ICAI, we are guilty. institute is asking a ca please tell us how many hours are you teaching every day ca in practice or ca in service and this ca he did not reply only to the letters of the institute then where is the ca guilty part ma'am there is no such clause <laughs> yes clause 2 part Three first schedule does not supply the information called for or does not comply with the requirements asked for by ICAI and or its functionaries. Okay, undisclosed income right has now been surrendered or disclosed as income during the tax assessments under the income tax law. Then whether that previously unrecorded income has it now been properly recorded in the books of account? Which clause of CARO? clause 8 of caro which is regarding the undisclosed income right clause 8 of the caro which is regarding the undisclosed income exactly right so that is why you need to do this mtp rtp suggested you know study material question practice okay so what you can do you can make a table like this saying rtp mtp suggested right and then after that you write over there whichever you know number 24 may 24 at least 5 i told you, you know you have to do the backward working number 23 may 23 and so on right so whenever you've seen that particular mtp rtp you put a tick over there mtp is going to be 1 and 2 hai na mtp 1 and 2 whenever you finish seeing it you're going to put a tick over there if you want to see it one more time then second time when you've seen it you put one more tick over there and whenever you go through these mtp rtp and you find any question which is tricky or which was a difficult one for you you can just mark it as a star you know so that next time when you study you know that all the questions i don't need to study only the star mark questions is what i need to study again obviously all these mtp rtp questions are there in the scanner they are there in the you know whatever study material you study from but we want to do random question practice we don't want everything served to us on a platter ke psu chapter and then 15 questions for psu chapter internal audit and those question no that's good to prepare with but for next level of preparations we have to do this mtp rtp practice okay and then the last one in our three rules for success in audit paper is the ample amount of the writing practice right writing practice with good presentation time obviously first good content then good presentation i'm not talking about handwriting and then we are also have to be concerned about our time management right so content presentation and the time management right so writing practice it's okay it's okay if you've completed 80% of your syllabus and you couldn't complete 100% if you complete 100 nothing like it but 
वट एवर बी द रीजन से यू कुड कंप्लीट ओनली एट्टी बट वट एवर एट्टी यू कंप्लीटेड एंड आउट ऑफ दैट इफ अ क्वेश्चन कम्स इन दी एग्जाम एंड यू आर नॉट एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई द क्वेश्चन एंड आफ्टर आइडेंटिफाइंग ऑल्सो यू आर नॉट एबल टू राइट देन हाउ मेनी एवर अटेम्प्ट यू राइट यू कॉन्ट क्लियर दी सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सी एनी ऑफ दी सब्जेक्ट एज सच एंड मोर सो ऑडिट बींग अ थियोरी सब्जेक्ट you understand that you have to be able to convey to the examiner what you have understood what is it that, that you are trying to say you say ma'am i am not i am very scared of writing i don't feel like you know i think it's better if i read it more times no you have to do the writing practice so at least one you know one question one page every time you study the subject of audit so like if you like if you are going to study audit for next 40 days 40 pages 40 answers minimum is what should be written in your books minimum you know then and that is that is not your notes what you prepare or that is not some charts what you prepare it's as if you are going to write it in the exam hall you know as if okay, you are you know the exam hall is where the question has come and you are writing the answer over there okay right so that's it then i will be using the regular class notes over here for you whichever material you have you can use that or even the institute study material would be a great resource for you to study see which what you say material you study from how many classes you attend or what that is all secondary primary is your effort and your approach towards the preparation of the subject and not having any preconceived notion in your mind you know by the time i finish the 20 hours of the class and i go away half of the students are still analyzing only i have come i have done the class you see your friends they've cleared ca final already and you're still busy forming opinions and busy having some prejudices or something no let it like you know when i was coming from vijayawada over here everywhere you know i could see that something written in telugu so i asked finally what is this written so they said siddham 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 so <laughs> so then i thought oh that's a good way whatever happens with politics let it happen but then at least for our exam let's have the siddhi to do siddham over there okay right and then over a period of time i've been coming to andhra pradesh for law for so many years and i've always been you know when they speak in front of in front of me in telugu it's the most encrypted language because i just can't understand even a single word but over a period of years i have heard that word matlandgu matlandgu something they said it so many times and then i wondered it's not but a word what are they saying so it simply means patel and something like that matia yeah, anyways my study of telugu is not important over here me teaching you audit is uh, certainly is the purpose why i am here okay if the class goes at a particular speed that is how it has been designed to be because if i don't maintain a particular pace of teaching in the class i won't be able to do justice and the purpose of this class of whatever years i have been taking this marathon class is that students get a confidence you know they at least their familiarity towards the subject gets constructed or they are you know refreshment you know they are refreshing of the subject they've studied it and then their swot analysis towards the subject happens right so if it is fast that's normal rather if it goes slow then you have to come to me so i know nobody will come to me you understand that's how we design it okay so we'll have one session on an average of around less than 2 hours 2 hours on an average then after that a 10 to 15 minutes break lunch break i know that i have supposed to give you a one hour lunch break and then after that we end the day whenever we are finished scheduled you know finished with whatever we have scheduled for our discussion on that day i don't worry about the break i'm telling you very honestly that i need a break more than you you know because i would be speaking continuously you know and teaching the subject so please be more patient and kind you know when you are even you know your face is said that oh, you know why is she not giving a break you know even i want to give it but there are particular topics which i want to cover and then after that give the break okay don't make it a point that you're just listening to me throughout the class no you will not get the maximum advantage of the class when you do that you have to keep on writing you have to keep on doing the marking I have to make some notations of what i am saying in the class because right now when you listen to me you think you will remember but i am telling you you will forget right so for you to keep a trace of that you keep something written in your book in the in the context of what i am teaching in the class right clear everyone right all good
right so let's begin with our discussions right so today we plan to finish 19 standards we'll have to no because see we have only 3 days <laughs> okay all right so let's make my life easy by first discussing or taking you back to the fundamentals because you know audit is a subject where the terminology in your paper the wordings which you use in your paper are damn very important right if you write in your own language the examiner give you their own marks right so they give you very less marks in the subject of audit in that case so you have to use the technical wordings in the answer of the icai and rather you know once upon a time there used to be a situation where you know institute used to ask the wholesale question like you know entire question like say example the contents of the engagement letter then after that they change to retail question okay what are the principal contents of the engagement letter and i've always been telling my students that when the question is asked in retail you should know the points in detail right? specifically you have to know the points and looking at the new study material of icai the kind of mcqs and test your understanding questions they have made over there i have to go one level further wherein you have to do the micro reading of the subject right absolutely word by word concept by concept four four line by four four lines because that one four line there is a concept given over there and out of that concept they make a case study or they make an mcq in the exam you understand so even wholesale and retail i understand it that's not serving my purpose for writing the answers for the mcq and the case study based questions in the exams right the case study based questions in the exam but look at it like you know we are by default making the subject sound very scary or like a monster or so but to be honest you just need 40 marks in the subject is the just correct you just need 40 over there yeah i think aggregate you need 50 over there so it's not that you have to score 80 or 85 or something right number 23 uh, all is uh, inter all india rank one jay jamulia he got 93 marks in audit and then you know so anyways you can uh, listen about that later but yeah 93 marks in audit like it's been a nightmare for everyone and how could it be made possible and so right so obviously if one like one that one student in his marks two students can pass <laughs> you don't understand no right? but yeah but i one you know few more things over here the students who you know what you say get a now in the new course no so who get like a 320 out of 600 are more happier in life than the students who get the 520 out of 600 and they get a all india rank 7 and they say oh, yo i should have got all india rank 1 you know why i got 520 i was thinking institute will give me 540 you'll say nothing can be done of you in life Look at me, 320, I am giving the food to the entire village. I am going to visit all the temples in India. And then you away without bias to any religion. I am going all to the religious places of worship. And here you are depressed. Oh my God, I got package only of 80 lakh. Oh, yo, I should have got package of 95 lakh. This is nothing, nothing can be done for you. You understand now? And you know, students who clear in first attempt, Big fours, they don't like those students. They say those students who write two, three attempts, they have better perseverance. They have patience. They have the value of life. Right? They become more courteous. First attempt is over smart. Na? First attempt is over smart. They think they have conquered the world. So don't feel very bad. Don't feel very bad. Okay. Right. So everything has its pros and cons. Right. So let's begin with our discussion on SE 200 overall objectives of the independent auditor and the conduct of an audit in accordance with the standards on auditing. Yes, everyone sit straight and absolutely no talking to your friends in the class. Every time you talk to your friends in the class in your next attempt, it is a minus one. You understand? So just be absolutely quiet, right? Just sit next to the person whom you hate the most. Okay, right. So SA 200 overall objectives of the independent auditor and 
conduct the conduct of an audit in accordance with the standards on auditing right so what is the overall objective of the independent auditor to obtain reasonable assurance what is reasonable assurance it is a high level of assurance but it is not an absolute assurance due to the inherent limitations of an audit the most important one being that evidence obtained by the auditor is persuasive rather than conclusive in nature okay reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or whether due to error and thereby enabling the auditor to express an opinion that financial statements have been prepared by the management in accordance with an applicable financial reporting framework right apply cable financial reporting framework that means the framework which is to be applied while doing the financial reporting means the laws and regulations which the management has to follow while preparing the financial statements example indian company what is the framework which the management needs to follow while preparing the financial statements in days plus the schedule 3 to the companies act say that company is also listed on the us stock exchange then they also so have to prepare their financial statements as per the us gap then that is the applicable financial reporting framework and then what is the objective of the auditor to issue a report in which he will give his findings and how will he report his findings in accordance with the standards on auditing right so 700 series which gives you the contents of the report okay right so free from material misstatement simply what does it mean there is no material fraud or error and there is no material difference between what is and what should be that is because if there is material fraud there is material error in the financial statements can you express an opinion saying true and fair no if there is material fraud material error we cannot say that the financial statements give a true and fair view so for that auditor wants to obtain a reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement right so reasonable assurance free from material misstatement and applicable financial reporting framework okay right then after that what do we study next over there is that auditor whenever you want to achieve this overall objective of sa 200 you need to comply with the ethical requirements including the independence e r i i right ethical requirements those being integrity straightforward honest and sincere objectivity not to compromise no having the bias in forming the opinion pcdc professional competence and due care confidentiality not to disclose the secrets of the client unless required by law or taken the prior consent of the client and last one is the professional behavior avoid any behavior which might bring the discredit to the profession right so ca if your behavior is bringing the disrepute to the profession your guilty of other misconduct under 241 right in the opinion of the council brings disrepute to the profession or to the institute as a result of his action whether or not related to his professional work ca if you breach confidentiality you're guilty of professional misconduct under 112 clause 1 part 1 second schedule and ca if you don't exercise due care that means you are grossly negligent in the conduct of your professional duties so you are guilty of professional misconduct under 712 clause 7 part 1 second schedule right does not exercise due diligence or is grossly negligent in the conduct of his professional duties okay and then ca you have to be independent independence means that the judgment of a person is not a subordinate to the wishes or directions of another person so whatever you think you express your opinion you don't come under the words or pressure of another person while forming your opinion and what does it say this independence of the ca should not be only of the mind but also should be the independence of the appearance that you say yes yes i know i am independent that is as per your mind Okay, you think you are independent, but if I ask a RITP, a reasonable and informed third party, 
even though they think that are you independent they also say yeah yeah this person appears to be independent so then that is independence in appearance also to be and also appear to be independent so in your mind according to you you are independent but if i ask a ritp who is ritp reasonable and informed third party even they say yes the ca is independent then that is independence of the appearance okay right then whenever right you know rather the title of our audit report is also what independent auditors report so auditor whenever you have to ensure that you are independent next as per sqc 1 and se 220 there should be the policies and procedures in the ca firm to identify whether there are are any to identify whether there are any threats to the independence of the auditor right any threats to the independence of the ca like you know companies act all the disqualifications given under section 1413 they were all examples of the threats to the independence of the ca that means if i am an officer employee of the company can i be appointed as an auditor no i am indebted to the company i am holding a security i have a business relationship my relative is a director or kmp can i do the audit of the company no right so all disqualifications are examples of threats to the independence of the ca okay now what are the five types of threats to the independence of the ca f s s a i what does that mean familiarity threat so rotation of company auditor was introduced because of this familiarity threat because same ca was doing the audit of company for 30 40 50 years so that is why they said some same firm cannot do the audit for more than 10 years an individual cannot do the audit for more than 5 years why because of the familiarity threat then you have the self interest threat that means i am having a financial interest in the client i am having a business relationship with the client i am considering potential employment with the client so obviously it is in my own selfish interest right self interest that i will agree to what the client says right next one s is the self review threat where is it is section 144 auditor not to render certain services maker checker concept getting violated i am writing the books of account of the company can i audit the books of account no why it is self review threat because i have only written the books of account how i can audit them right so if maker checker concept gets violated then that is the self review threat then you have the advocacy threat that means you are in favor of the company right or wrong you don't bother you are always in the favor of the company why because you are promoting the shares of the company you are handling litigations on behalf of the company so you are always in the favor of the client you are advocating on behalf of the client ke my client is innocent my client is correct right so that's the advocacy threat and the last one is the intimidation intimidation means threatening threat and it means client is threatening you oh ca you issue qualified opinion we'll file a litigation against you oh ca you check our inventory next year we'll change the auditor of the company so they are threatening the ca right they are intimidating you know like when a lion comes in front of a person that person gets intimidated right so here that's what they are talking about is the intimidation threat right so one what does it say there should be policies and procedures in the firm to identify whether there are any threats then these are the five types of the threats to the independence of the ca then if any threat has been identified if there are any threats to the independence of the ca next steps to which should be taken either to eliminate the threat or second to reduce the threat in order to reduce the threat you need to put the applicable safeguards right so eliminate you are purchasing the you have purchased the shares of the company they say it's a threat so you say okay no problem i'll sell the share so what you've done you've eliminated or your relative is holding securities of 22 lakh rupees so what you tell your relative up to the face value of rupees 1 lakh okay 2 lakh not okay so what you're telling your relative to reduce the threat right so eliminate or reduce but see you're not able to eliminate you're not able to reduce the threat to the independence then what does it say withdraw from the engagement and if you've not yet accepted the engagement then do not accept the engagement so if you've already accepted then 
withdraw and then if you have not yet accepted then what does it say not to accept such a engagement where there is a threat to the independence of the ca right so very important discussion regarding the independence right these points keep on coming time and again right the independence of the auditor okay right then after the independence of the auditor in sa 200 we also say that auditor throughout the course of audit you have to maintain the attitude of professional skepticism an attitude that includes a questioning mind being alert to conditions which may indicate a possible misstatement due to error or fraud and a critical assessment of the audit evidence then it says throughout the course of audit auditor you need to exercise the professional judgment that is your informed decision making decision making which is backed by logic if anybody asks you why you check 20 sample why you issue qualified opinion why you are doing inspection you should have an explanation behind every decision of yours that is called as the professional judgment then it says auditor you need to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence right quantity and quality sufficiency refers to the quantity and appropriateness refers to the quality right so both sufficient and appropriate audit evidence okay and then it says in the audit auditor you have to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level right you have to minimize the audit risk can you make it zero never but can you reduce it to an acceptably low level yes you can reduce it to an acceptably low level okay right so what is our starting point of the audit we understand the entity and its environment that means we obtain the knowledge of the client's business from the knowledge of the client's business we identify the business risks and business risk anything which can have an adverse effect on the achievement of the entity objectives anything you know which comes in between of the entity achieving its objective is called as a business risk okay now if you think that because of this business risk there may be because of this business risk there may be an impact on the financial statements then that business risk becomes the inherent risk which is there by default you know which is there before consideration of controls possibility of a misstatement in an account balance classes of transaction presentation disclosure which could be material either individually or when aggregated with other misstatement before consideration of controls means what i'm saying i understood the entity I obtain knowledge of the business what I came to know okay oh my god purchase price of raw material has substantially increased this year I come to know this is what has happened in the business during the year okay raw material purchase price up to last year it was 20 this year it became 220 example so is this not a business risk is this not a business risk it is so now I think this may affect the financial statements then that is a inherent risk okay now when management let this happen they also management knows now okay, purchase prices increase from 20 to 220 okay there might be under recording of purchases in the company so will management let this happen no they will design the internal control systems in the organization to pdc what is pdc to prevent or detect and correct you know? so either prevent this from happening if it happens then detect it and once it happens then correct it once it is detected so they will design you know? they will do the design implementation and maintenance of internal control to prevent detect and correct the fraud and error but even after the controls are designed can it give you 100 percent guarantee that now there cannot be any under recording of purchases no because you have the inherent limitations of the internal control because you have the inherent limitations of the internal control okay whatever best possible controls you put but still can you give 100 percent guarantee okay now there cannot be any under recording of purchases no right so obviously there is also some amount of the control risk that is the weaknesses the deficiencies in internal control the deficiencies in the internal control okay so now please listen to me okay inherent risk so what i think by default by default is 60 percent of the purchases the company records may be wrong how i say 60 percent professional judgment based on your understanding of the entity and its environment
so out of 100 purchases i think that 60 purchases might go wrong now would management have designed controls to prevent this from happening yes so i check the controls in the organization what i come to know that controls are effective only to the extent of 50 percent 50 percent even controls are ineffective that means 50 percent is my control risk so earlier how much risk i had 60%. Out of that, how much is taken care of by the controls? 50%. So, how much is still remaining is the 30%. 60% into 50%. That is RMM is equal to IR into CR. And inherent risk into control risk. Okay. Now, when I am doing the audit, as now this was from the client side. See, purchase price of raw material is increased from 20 to 220. Inherent risk, it is from the client side. Controls are effective only to the extent of 50%. This is also from the client side. This is not because I have gone for the audit, purchase price have increased or because I have gone for audit that is controls are effective only for 50%. No. Had I not gone for audit also? This was the reality. That is why we say inherent and control risk, RMM, we assess. We have to only find out. Is it already there? Yes, we only have to find out how much is there. Now, when I do the audit, as a part of my audit, will I do checking of purchases also? When I do the audit, as a part of my audit, will I do the checking of purchases also? Will I try to detect any misstatement in the purchases? Can my audit procedures give 100% guarantee that auditor don't worry when you do audit you will detect all the fraud error in purchases? No. Why now? Because there are the inherent limitations of the audit. Now what we have is the inherent limitations of the audit right so it says how much ever auditor you try to detect the misstatement say there is a 20 percent risk that you may not detect the misstatement right so 80 percent auditor says i will detect the misstatement and 20 percent what auditor says that i also may not be able to detect the misstatement so that is the detection risk right so how much was my rmm 30%. Then what I say, how much auditor says I will be able to take care of it up to 80%. That means 20% auditor says even I will not be able to detect. So ultimately, how much is the audit risk? To what extent am I able to reduce it? 6%. Can I make it zero? Never. Can I make it zero? Never. Right? So it's like, you know, if something is falling from top of the building. And so that is the understanding the entity and its environment. And then first it says the management will prevent this from happening. So that is control. Then you say management, if you don't find it, auditor says, wait, when I will come for the audit, I will find out. But there is still a possibility that ultimately nobody finds it. Right? And because of that, your opinion may go wrong, which is audit risk. What is the definition of audit risk? The risk that the auditor expresses an inappropriate audit opinion, wrong audit opinion, when the financial statements are materially misstated. That is what happened in case of Satyam. Auditor kept on saying that financial statements give a true and fair view. In reality, there was a 7,000 crore fraud in the financial statements of Satyam. Did the opinion of the auditor go wrong? Does your opinion go wrong every six months? Yes. So that is audit risk. Right? The risk that the auditor expresses an inappropriate audit opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. Okay. And what do we say? Please listen to me. Audit risk is the function of the risk of material misstatement and detection risk. Risk of material misstatement we assess. Detection risk we manage or we limit it. And I try to reduce it to an acceptably low level. Risk of material misstatement could be at the financial statement level or assertion level. Assertion level kya hai? A, B, C, D. Account balances, classes of transaction, presentation, disclosure, balance sheet, profit and loss and the notes. Right? And that is further divided under inherent risk and control risk. Right? So, audit risk is the function of the risk of material misstatement and detection risk. Risk of material misstatement we assess and detection risk we manage or we limit it to an acceptably low level. Can you make it zero? Never. Okay. Now, this audit risk, RMM, what we have to do? 
assess and detection risk what we have to do manage please listen to me to assess rmm the procedures performed by the auditor are called as the risk assessment procedures and to manage the detection risk the procedures performed by the auditor are called as the further audit procedures right so what are the audit procedure they say hey guys what do you do when you go for an audit what are the audit procedures so what do you say when we go for audit we first do the risk assessment which is discussed in essay 315 identifying and assessing what the risk of material misstatement how through understanding the entity and its environment so we i to perform the risk assessment procedures after we do risk assessment then we come for the further audit procedures further audit procedures discussed in sa3 30 what is the title of sa3 30 the auditors responses to assess risk which assess risk the risk which we assessed in sa315 ke i think purchases of the company may not be correctly recorded are you saying ke the purchases are not right no you say i think there is a risk of material misstatement there is a chance of material fraud and error Right, there is a possibility, right? And then further audit procedures have been further divided under two: test of control and substantive procedures. Right, test of control and substantive procedures. Right. So, what do we do in an audit? In an audit, everybody, please pay attention. We start with the risk assessment procedures. Risk assessment procedures help us to identify and assess the rmm then we come to further audit procedures in which we do the toc toc in which we check the operating effectiveness oe the operating effectiveness the design implementation and maintenance of controls in the organization and the results of toc help us to determine the nature timing and extent of the substantive procedures if controls are effective less substantive if controls are ineffective more substantive procedures and in substantive procedures test of detail and a vouching verification then substantive analytical procedures ratios and trends then agreeing the financial statements to the underlying records financial statements to underlying records means financial statements balance sheet balance sheet to schedule schedule to trial balance trial balance to ledger ledger to books of prime entry prime entry to voucher right so agreeing the financial statements to the underlying records many company management to prepare financial statements they say we don't need books of account will such financial statements give a true and fair view if they are not in agreement with the books of account no right so financial statements do they agree with the underlying records and last but not the least is examining the material journal entries that is the jv testing the journal voucher testing whether it is any bogus journal entry any fictitious journal entry which has been recorded in the books of account right so these are the audit procedures what we do in audit risk assessment then control testing and then the substantive procedures right we do risk assessment then control testing and then the substantive procedures okay right this audit procedures chart is given in sa 500 the audit procedures to obtain audit evidence okay then sa 500 also talks about the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence i c a i o r r that is i for inspection c for confirmation yes sa 505 external confirmations a for analytical procedures sa 520 i for inquiry o for observation r for recalculation and last r for Re-performance, right? Seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence: I C A I O R R, inspection, confirmation, 
analytical procedures inquiry observation recalculation and reperformance okay now when i am doing risk assessment procedures out of this icai orr will i do inspection yes will i do analytical yes will i do inquiry yes then also the observation yes no confirmation recalculation reperformance at risk assessment stage so we do i a o and r r doesn't stand for recalculation reperformance it stands for the related activities right then when i do test of control i c a i o r r out of that inspection inquiry observation and reperformance then inspection inquiry observation and reperformance for doing control testing and for substantive all seven for substantive can i use all the seven colors yes for substantive you can use all the seven colors so for risk assessment do i use inspection inquiry observation analytical procedure so there is an mcq question which says that risk assessment stage the auditor got the confirmation from the lawyers from the third party do you get confirmations from third parties at risk assessment stage no you do that at the substantive stage of the audit right confirmation is used as an audit procedure at the substantive stage of the audit and not at the right risk assessment stage of the audit right so probably let me see if i can directly bring you to that question ha huh, see this anand an audit executive has performed various procedures during the course of audit which of the following procedure combination of procedure is a not likely to be considered as risk assessment procedure so at risk assessment procedure do i do trend analysis do i uh, go through the company internal manu control manual and visit company's plant so trend analysis is analytical internal control manual is inspection visiting the company plant is again inspection and observation do i make inquiries from company marketing council in house legal counsel yes communication with external legal counsel by sending letter of inquiry what did i tell you confirmations are not used at risk assessment stage and inquiry is made with company's information system personal to provide information about control failures and going through company internal control manual so third fourth one also we perform what is not done as a part of risk assessment is communication with the entities external legal counsel by sending a letter of inquiry did i tell you today in the beginning micro reading application of concept is what is required right this is in your rtp may 24 Right, the fifth question in the integrated case scenario over there. So we don't even need to read what is there in the case scenario. You understand? If we know that at risk assessment we do inspection, inquiry, analytical observation, no confirmations at risk assessment stage, recalculation, reperformance, no, we can easily answer this question. Right? We can easily answer this question. Okay. Right. So these are audit procedures. You understand? What are the audit procedures? What you do in audit? you go at 9 o'clock in the morning you come at 11 o'clock in the night when you are doing listed entity quarterly early audit what are you doing all the time there risk assessment control testing and then substantive risk assessment inspection inquiry analytical observation inspection inquiry observation reperformance and here you are making use of all these seven colors right all the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence okay right then now substantive procedures it says whenever you are checking anything in detail there are certain assertions over there what are assertions they are the representations which have been made by the management so these representations are for account balances classes of transaction and the presentation and disclosure what we call it as a b c d right for any balance sheet item that means say i am checking the inventory of the company or uh, say i am checking the ppe of the company any balance sheet item what i want to check for the balance sheet item ercv okay whether that building does it really exist is it in the name of the entity whether all the buildings of the company have been recorded that is completeness and whether they have been recorded in the books at the proper value and also depreciation rent you know insurance has been charged to profit and loss that is allocation right that is the allocation right so for any balance sheet item you are told okay go and check the creditors of a company 
So what do you check of the creditor? The existence, the rights and obligation, the completeness and the valuation and allocation. Then when you are told to check any profit and loss account item, what do you check? OCACC, occurrence, the completeness, then the accuracy, then the cutoff and the classification. This is a wonderful set of assertions over here. Because say example, I'm checking the rent expenditure. So what I have to check whether the rent is in the name of the company, is it related to the entity, whether all rent expenditure has been recorded, has it been recorded at the proper amount in the proper period and in the correct account then i will say yes this transaction has been properly recorded then i can say yeah you say oh i want to check whether transactions are properly recorded how do i check whether a transaction is properly recorded ocacc you know it should not be the personal rent expenditure it should not be that you've taken four properties on rent but only three property ka rent is recorded on only four months rent is recorded no completeness then after that the amount Right? It should be if 2 lakh rent you are paying every month, it should be recorded at 2 lakh. Then if it's your rent expenditure for 25-26, it should be recorded in 25-26 and not coming in earlier year or next year. Cut off, it should be recorded in the correct period or you show it as prepaid or outstanding. Right? And classification, it's your rent expenditure, don't record it in your traveling expenses. Right? So it has to be recorded in the correct account. And presentation and disclosure, notes. Disclosures could be given of a balance sheet item or disclosure could be given of a profit and loss account item. So that is why we combine both together, ORC, VC. You know, for presentation disclosure, what do we have is the ORC, VC. Because presentation disclosure could be of a balance sheet item or it could be of a profit and loss account item. Right, clear to everyone, the assertions addressed through substantive procedures, then the audit procedures, then the seven methods of obtaining the audit evidence. Do you follow what we discuss over here? Okay, then it says CA firm, whenever you are doing your work, you have to do your work maintaining the quality of the services. And so we have standard on quality control. Okay, we study SA 315 wherein we understand the entity and its environment. As a part of understanding the entity and its environment, we understand the internal control system. What are the components of internal control system given in SA 315? CRISM. And components, parts of internal control discussed in SA 315, CRISM. What does C stand for? Everyone, please pay attention. Control environment. R for risk assessment. Then I for information system and communication. Then C for control activities. And last M is for the monitoring, right? Is the monitoring. Right, so every organization, they say, oh, in our company, we have very good controls. Like say Airtel, they have controls over the billing for their prepaid and postpaid subscribers. Or insurance company, they have the controls over the insurance policies that are issued. So obviously, what are the elements of this internal control? The control environment. Okay, how much is the participation of TCWG? What are their human resource policies and structure? Do they have a proper organization structure? So basically control environment is checking the fabric. It's checking the texture of controls in the organization. Are they like, okay, okay, theek hai. if control there, there, not there also, okay, no big deal. Are they having that casual approach or are they like, you know, ISO certified, commitment to competence, importance given to integrity, ethical values. So that's the environment. It's as simple as okay, how control conscious is the organization. You know, how control conscious. Okay, are they so particular? Okay, no, no, we can't have any compensation or any relaxation when it comes to our control. Now, if an organization wants to design control, first they have to do the risk assessment. Okay, where all in our company controls are required to be designed? Like, you know, you go to any shopper stop or pantaloons or so. Obviously, the each and every product over there is the code, the barcode is put over there. You know, that magnetic some uh, recognition over there. You go and do the billing and then after that you exit the store. But again, there is a security guard standing over there. 
and then again he will tell you to show the bill and then he will check what is there in your bag and then allow you to go out in addition to that there is also a recognition device kept over there okay, any product untagged it will beep over there right so why did they design this control because they identified the risk that maybe billing is not done but still the products are taken out you understand so to design a control first what management needs to do they need to do the risk assessment okay, where all if there is no control fraud error can take place obviously when does the person have the capability to do a fraud then they identify an opportunity from where does the opportunity come from the weak internal control you know from the weak internal control right so that is why next element of internal control is that management have you done the proper risk assessment then after you have assessed the risk then accordingly have you developed your information system that you know if company wants to purchase a laptop can they just go to a chroma showroom and purchase a laptop and start using it no there has to be an asset requisition note then there has to be quotation then purchase order then asset inward note then gate and you know gate entry register first gate inward register then the quality inspection right so first gate entry after gate entry what is the next one quality inspection after that the entry is made in the asset register then the purchase invoice is processed then the payment is made to the supplier right so this entire process so that means what after identifying the risk next accordingly they develop their information system based on that the control activities are defined that one of the activity of the cashier that at the end of every day he has to tally the physical cash with the cash as per the books of account so that's an activity which has been defined and last but not the least is the monitoring monitoring is nothing but the internal audit okay, whether these controls are operating effectively as expected or not right so these are the elements of the internal control system which have to be there at the client place in the ca firm which is doing the audits and other engagement there has to be the design implementation and maintenance of the quality control system so at client place there has to be internal control system in the ca firm there has to be the quality control system and what are the elements of the quality control system we have the lehen right what are the elements of the quality control system we have the lehem so at the client place there has to be chrism and in the ca form there has to be the lehem right in the ca form what there has to be there has to be the lehem okay right so now what we are talking about quality control system what are the elements of the quality control system lehem right what does the l stand for leadership responsibilities for quality within the firm then there should be compliance with the ethical requirements including the independence then there has to be the acceptance and continuance of the client relationship and the engagement then there should be policies and procedures for the human resources then there has to be the proper engagement performance and last but not the least there has to be the proper monitor right monitoring in chrism also last one was m monitoring right so leadership responsibility leadership responsibility has to be given to the experienced and the able persons in the firm right so it could be given to the ceo the managing partner the senior most partner of the firm for the purpose of sqc1 because somebody in like sqc is applicable to all firms but somebody in pwc has to take the responsibility that the entire firm complies with the requirement of sqc1 so who will take that responsibility it says the experienced and able person in the firm right so ceo managing partner they will get design the policies and procedures and communicate it to all the firm personnel next system means what there have to be policies and procedures so next there have to be policies and procedures in the firm to ensure compliance with the ethical requirements including independence independence i just discussed with you about the threats to the independence specifically in sqc 1 chapter 1 they are talking about the familiarity threat okay and in order to you know reduce this familiarity threat one what does it say rotate your engagement team members 
and second the same ep who is ep engagement partner cannot do the audit of the listed entities for more than 7 years he cannot do the audit of the listed entity for more than 7 years right so like you know say deloitte can they do the audit of say geo limited for 10 years for 10 years can deloitte do the audit yes you know one form for two you know one form for two terms of five consecutive year but can the same partner of deloitte do the audit of geo for 10 years no 7 years Right, the engagement partner has to be rotated after a predefined period of seven years. After that, the seven years there is a cooling period of two years, and then, anyways, one more year is only remaining because overall the limit is ten years as per company law. You understand? So, can Dell or say PwC, ENY do the audit of a listed entity for ten years? Yes, but can the same partner of that firm do the audit for ten years? No, seven years, and after that there is a cooling period of two years. So might as well they'll make the cooling period of three years only. Why? Because for one year call that earlier fellow again. You understand that? So that's to address the familiarity threat. Okay, then what they are telling the firm that you know we know that you have to maintain the quality, but client is saying that CA, if you're little lenient with the opinion, we know that ideally you're supposed to give qualified, but if you give unmodified, instead of giving you forty lakh fee, we will give you eighty lakh fee. So see if you can do some adjustment. Right? See, client, you did the audit. You say I need to issue qualified opinion, and how much is the fee? Forty lakh. Client says, see, that see, we give you better offer. That you know, instead of forty lakh, we give you fee of the eighty lakh, but you give us unmodified clean report. Right? Will that be fine? No. That's the new content which has come in the. Right, that's the new discussion which they've specifically brought into the SQC one. The is quality is essential to the audit, and the firm's overriding commitment to quality, you know, and the requirement of independence. It is non-negotiable audit quality. Right, so this is an R raised to ten. Read, revise ten times before the exam. Right, so L. What am I talking about over here? Leadership responsibilities. L. Right, it has to be given to the CEO, managing partner, right? The lead is the experienced and able person in the firm. And what does it say? Quality is essential. It is non-negotiable. And firm assigns its management's responsibility so that so that commercial considerations do not override the quality of the work. So client says, okay, we'll give you more fee, but you, you, you know, don't qualify the opinion. You say no. Commercial considerations do not override the quality of the work performed. Then you continuously need to do the evaluation of your staff and their performance evaluation and firm devotes sufficient resources for the development, documentation and support of the QCPP. What is QCPP? Quality control policies and procedures, right? So that's your first element of the quality control system: leadership responsibility. What is the second one? Ethical requirements. Ethical requirements, and again, independence. Independence identify whether there are any threats. Then take steps to reduce or eliminate. If you cannot, then you withdraw. Right? At least an annual declaration of independence has to be taken from all the firm personnel. And SQC one is putting special focus on the familiarity threat. And what are they saying? In order to reduce this familiarity threat, there should be rotation after a predefined period. And the engagement partner should not do the audit for more than seven years. And there has to be a mandatory peer review. So, if I am doing audit of a listed entity, should I have a valid peer review certificate? Yes. And if I don't hold that, and without holding that peer review certificate, if I sign an audit report of a listed company, I'll be guilty under Clause Nine, Part One, Second Schedule. Fails to invite attention to material departure from the generally accepted audit procedures applicable to these circumstances. Right. So again, a question asked in your exams. Right. So that is E. What are we talking about? Lehem. L. Leadership responsibility. E. Ethical requirements including independence. A. Acceptance and continuance of the client relationship, right? So when you have to accept a new client or continue with an existing client, first thing, just as for CA, what is the first ethical requirement? Integrity. So for client also, what is the first thing we want for the client is the integrity of the client. So whether the people are good, then once you come to know about the integrity of the client, next you check whether you have the CCTR. 
competence, capability, time and resources to perform the engagement. And a client wants you to audit their financial statements which they've prepared as per German Gap. You don't know the G of German Gap, where you're going. You understand no competence, capability, time and resources. You require 40 days to do this audit. You require 40 chartered accountants to do this audit. You don't have 40 days of the time because already you have so many commitments and you don't have those many CAs. So that means you don't have the time. You don't have the resources and also whether you will be able to comply with the ethical requirement. Right. And again, you need to obtain the information. Right. Integrity of the client. Right. For that, we have a retail question. Okay, how do I come to know about the integrity of my client? Okay, whether my people are good people or whether they are like, you know, very fraudulent people. Right? So how do I come to know that whether my client are good people or are they fraudulent people? If I come to know that, oh, my client is involved in lot of money laundering, obviously they cannot be good people. Right? Then I look into the attitude of the client. Right? I look into the attitude. Then I also check are they involved in any criminal activities. Then I also look into the reputation of the client. Right? So I look into their money laundering activities if any. Then I look into their attitude, any criminal activities. Then I also check the reputation of the client. Then obviously my knowledge regarding the integrity of my client will increase with my ongoing relationship with that client so as and when i continue to provide services to this client i get more and more information regarding their integrity so that is ongoing relationship then i look into the nature of the client then i also look into are they inappropriately limiting the scope of the audit right so are they imposing any limitation on scope and are they trying to keep the firm fees as low as possible Right, so what is the name of the client whose integrity we have to check? Mr. Macro Nil. Right, so we look into the money laundering, then after that the, sorry, after the money laundering, the attitude, then the criminal activities, reputation, ongoing relationship, nature of the client, then inappropriately limiting the scope of work and reducing the audit fees as low as possible. Right. So again, a question asked in your exams, the integrity. Then next question is regarding the CCTR. Do you have the competence, capability, time and resources? Right. So competence for that, you need to have the knowledge of the industry, knowledge of the laws. Then once you have the knowledge of the industry and you have the knowledge of the laws, then next you need to check whether you have the sufficient people then whether you have the experts if needed then also whether you have the fellow to do the eqcr the engagement quality control review the work of one ca being reviewed by another ca before the report is issued right an objective evaluation of the significant judgments made and whether the firm will be able to complete the engagement within the deadline right so that is whether you have the time right so first point is whether you have the competence first two points Right. Then next two points is the sufficient personnel and the experts. So that is your resources. And then you have the last point for the time. Right. So this is a new candidate. Right. So expecting to see a question on this one in the exam. Integrity of client, Mr. Macronel, they've already asked. Can they ask it again? Yes. But what's the new candidate for question over there is the how do you check? When I have to accept a client, when I have to continue a client relationship, what are the three points I need to check for? Integrity, then CCTR, competence, capability, time, resources, and whether I'll be able to comply with the ethical requirements, including independence. So integrity, retail question we saw, right, Mr. Macronel. Then now competence, capability, time, and resources. For that, we studied a retail question. And then after that, if there is any conflict of interest, what does it say? Again, you may decide to end the client relationship. But before you decide to do that, you have to consider your professional legal responsibilities and then decide to withdraw. Like, you know, if I'm resigning, then within 30 days from the date of resignation, I need to file the form ADT 3 with company and ROC. And in case of a government company, also with the C and AG, right? So that's my professional legal responsibility. And then I will also consider the possibility of the withdrawal from the engagement. Okay. If the CA decides to 
withdraw then one he needs to discuss it with the management tcwg right then after discussion if he decides to withdraw his decision that he has decided to withdraw he needs to communicate then again the professional legal responsibility regarding the withdrawal and also he needs to document right so withdrawal from the engagement right so this could again be a question for the case study right the withdrawal from the engagement next ethic a uh, next element of quality control system is the human resources so whether the firm has the sufficient people to perform the engagement so do they have the other uh, identity and role of the engagement partner is communicated to the key members of the client then whether the engagement partner has the competence capability authority and time and the responsibilities of engagement partner are communicated to that partner or he might say oh i did not know that i was the engagement partner right so engagement partner who is that that should be communicated to the client then you should see whether engagement partner has the capability competence authority and time and also the roles and responsibilities should be communicated to that partner right next one what does it say engagement performance right so after human resources what is the next element of the quality control system is the engagement performance for so because ultimately the quality of services of your firm will be known by how you perform the engagement so it says any engagement that you perform there has to be proper dsr what is dsr direction supervision and review then it says listed entity audit before the report is issued and eqcr should be done right that is engagement quality control review the work of one ca being reviewed by another ca in the same form before the report is issued you know eqcr engagement quality control review right then after that it says consultation should be taken for the difficult contentious matters within the form or outside the firm whenever you come across any difficult contentious matters then whatever work you do in the audit or the engagement that has to be documented so there has to be engagement documentation and differences of opinion if there is any fight going on between manager and the partner or partner and eqcr it says the report not to be issued till the time the difference of opinion have been resolved right so engagement partner is saying we should issue qualified opinion eqcr fellow says that what you are saying qualified it should be adverse opinion so it says the report not to be released till the time the difference of opinion has been resolved right so these are the five points under the engagement performance that there has to be proper direction supervision review direction towards the start supervision during and review towards the end of the engagement then it says there has to be eqcr work of one ca being checked by another ca in the same form before the report is issued hai na before the report is issued then after that for difficult contentious matters the consultation should be taken consultation could be taken within the firm or it can also be taken outside the firm you know auditors internal expert or it could be the auditors external expert also then there has to be the proper engagement documentation and last one differences of opinion not the report not to be re released till the time the differences of opinion have not been resolved okay and last element of quality control monitoring right that whether this quality control system has it been operating effectively or there is any recommendations changes to be made to the quality control system right so pick up a few audits done during the year and check whether quality has been maintained or not right so that is sqc1 quality control for firm what is discussed in sqc1 at the firm level same thing discussed in sa220 at the audit level it says quality control for firms that perform audits and reviews and sa220 quality control for an audit of the financial statements right quality control for an audit right so obviously if my entire firm has to maintain quality each and every audit that my firm does has to maintain the quality so if the question is at the firm level then you write sqc1 if the question is at the audit level then you write sa220 or best thing to write is as per sa220 read along with sqc1 right read along with sqc1 right for the entire firm who is the leader 
the ceo the managing partner of the firm he is the leader for the entire firm but for a particular audit who will be the leader very good the engagement partner he will be the leader for a particular audit for the entire firm you will have the human resources all the 4000 chartered accountants working in your firm that will be the entire resources but in a particular audit you will have the engagement team you know in the firm you have all the 4000 ca but say these 70 cas are working on this audit then that's your engagement team you understand okay what is the objective of sqc1 what are the objectives of sqc1 that the firm complies with the professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement and the firm's reports issued are they appropriate in the circumstances okay firm do you do the work as per the professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement and second whether the reports issued by the firm are they appropriate in these circumstances and same thing what is told in sqc1 at the firm level sa 220 it says whether the audit complies with the professional standards and the legal regulatory requirement and whether the audit reports issued are they appropriate in these circumstances Right, so whether the firm complies and whether the audit complies because quality control for firm and SA220 is quality control for an audit of the financial statements. Right, quality control for an audit of the financial statements. Okay, right. Right, so blockchain. Right, read this uh, question over here. Bhavesh Bansal and uh, Bansal Aurora and Company, a CA firm, is currently performing an audit for Wool Limited, a sizable manufacturing company. Mr. Bhavesh Bansal, an experienced audit engagement partner, holds the responsibility for ensuring that the audit engagement aligns with the professional standards, regulatory requirements, and the legal obligation. What I told you, PSLR and you know, professional standards and legal regulatory requirement. His duty encompasses the overall direction supervision and the final issuance of the report dsr while conducting the audit the engagement team encounters a complex issue relating to the valuation of companies inventory within the team there are differences of opinion on how to address this matter resulting in a contentious situation what is mr bhave's responsibility in this situation right tell me a b c d right rtp may 24 question number seven Yes, A, B, C, D. Mr. Bhave shall adhere to the firm's policy only for addressing and resolving the differences of opinion. Here, what does it say? There is difference of opinion and there is also a complex issue. There is a contentious situation. Okay. Mr. Bhave should secure management representation concerning the valuation and proceed with further audit procedure out. Okay, Bhave should ensure that appropriate consultation occurs within the team and if necessary with individuals within or outside the firm and Bhave should communicate the issue to the client's management for resolution out and a management representation refer the matter to the client management out. So now the finale is between A and C. And the finale is between A and C. Now, it's not only a matter of addressing the difference of opinion. What did we study in SQC 1 over here? Okay, for difficult contentious matters, there should be policy and procedure in the form wherein you are allowed to take the consultation. Right. So in this case, what does it say? Mr. Bhave should ensure that consultation occurs within the team and if necessary within or outside the firm. Why? Because there is a complex issue and for complex issue, should, different, should consultation be taken on difficult contentious matters? Yes. Rather, if you look at the wordings in SQC 1, right? if you look at the wordings, what does it say? Consultation in difficult or contentious matter. So when you've read this word contentious, you know, contentious over there, then you see that same word used in the question which they've made. And then that tells you, okay, yes, now we need to take the consultation for the difficult or contentious matters. You understand that. So we've just like discussed some part of our class, but even in that much, we could address these two MCQs over here. 
right even we could understand so obviously if i study 1000 mcqs the 1001 is going to come in the exam if i study 2000 2001 is going to come in the exam but then what is the art or what is the benefit of studying these 1000 or 2000 we are in a better position to address the next one obviously there could be questions coming from those 1000 also which you studied but then that's not ca exam no if what you study that comes and you write the answer and then you you then also you don't get marks you understand no but that's not what it is no you know see ca student what you studied you are able to write an answer normal but better is what ki you what you've studied but you've not seen that type of a question so you apply your knowledge and write down the answer that's actually the skill set which we need to go to right so it's not that oh i studied this 500 question and ma'am tell me the 75 important question i wish i could have told you you understand no and for me to it's like you know equal you know justice for all so i say only two types of questions you study one which are already asked in the exams and one which are yet to be asked in exams that's it don't study your third type only these two types of questions you need to study if you see a question you say oh this has come ah oh, it can come again study you not come ah oh, it can come in my exam let me study simple you know right that is how you need to study okay right so anyways that completes our discussion for the sqc1 and sa220 okay right so let's take a 10 minute break and then we shall continue with our discussion okay right so 10 minutes and then we begin immediately after that